I think people in Ottawa know Minister Shirelli very well. He's a well-known figure in the Ottawa region. Uh, he's been a passionate community advocate all of his life. Uh, born and raised in Ottawa's Little Italy as the youngest of seven children, he earned his law degree at the University of Ottawa and set up a community-based legal practice. Minister Shirelli was elected to the Legislative Assembly of Ontario on March 4th, 2010, and then as MPP for the riding of Ottawa West from 87 to 97, and he served as Parliamentary Assistant to the Chair of the Management Board in 1987-1988. He also served as the Regional Chair of Ottawa Carleton and was later elected Mayor of the Amalgamated City of Ottawa. He was appointed Minister of Infrastructure on August 18, 2010. It is indeed our pleasure and privilege to have the Minister join us this evening. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to speak to a group of professionals who are literally on the forefront of building a new and stronger Ontario. And uh, I know many of you are on the cutting edge of innovation, um, uh, including your leadership uh, and participation in areas of public-private partnerships, uh, AFPs, or Infrastructure Ontario, as has been mentioned. Uh, but I want to start off by uh, uh, saying how much uh, the Government of Ontario appreciates the work of engineers and planners uh, and what you contribute uh, to the province. Uh, it's appreciated, uh, and we respect what you're doing, uh, and I think it's, uh, it's very uh, important uh, or significant, rather, uh, that this uh, particular event is occurring uh, on a university campus because so much innovation and change happens there. And uh, we are, in our ministry, very interested in innovation and change, particularly when it comes to uh, infrastructure. Um, on that point, I know that some people uh, in the audience are engaged with uh, projects that are related to the uh, stimulus infrastructure program, and some people have been concerned about the March 31st deadline, uh, including some projects in the city of Ottawa, and I see Nancy Shepherds here as well. Uh, over the last uh, several months, uh, we have been saying that we should be reasonable on the infrastructure uh, deadline. Uh, the Premier said it uh, back in August. Uh, I said it back in August myself. Uh, two days ago, the Premier announced that we are prepared uh, to extend the deadline for another construction season. Um, and uh, both the uh, Premier and I have challenged the federal government uh, to come to the table and work out the details on how we can do that together because it is a partnership initiative um, between the federal government and the provincial government. When I was mayor of Ottawa over a six-year period, I worked closely with the Mayor's Caucus of Canada's larger cities uh, at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities, or FCM, which is called. It was a six-year battle to convince the federal government and the provinces that it is absolutely essential that the three levels of government align their priorities and budgets when it comes to strategic infrastructure investments, and most importantly, that the funding allocations be sustainable, long-term, and predictable. Au cours de ces dernières années en Guyon, les grands progrès ont été accomplis en ce sens. The mayors were successful in achieving sustainable gas tax and GST rebates, but obtained virtually no commitments on long-term strategic infrastructure funding. In my opinion, we have yet to achieve sufficient sustainability or predictability in our medium and long-term infrastructure programs, and collectively, governments have much more to do in that regard. We are generally across Canada, not at a level where hospital CEOs, university presidents, municipal councils, and infrastructure service providers can pro properly plan their infrastructure requirements for the medium or long-term. However, I'm extremely proud of the higher level of success in this regard in the province of Ontario. We came to power in 2003, and compared to previous Ontario governments, the McGinty government has taken a giant leap into sustainable and predictable infrastructure funding and delivery. Just from May to September in 2010 alone, over 300 stimulus infrastructure projects were completed across the province. Here in our area, we've approved a total of 144 stimulus projects, 
backed by $287 million in provincial investment, combined with the three levels of government, is close to $900 million. Together, these investments are estimated to create and preserve 7,500 jobs right here in our community. For example, we're investing $26.5 million in the waterfront project right here on the campus of Carleton University. When completed, this project will add two new buildings to the campus. It's important to note that the five-year Renew Ontario program, which preceded the stimulus program, this was the first time in Ontario history that a longer-term commitment had been given to infrastructure funding. In that combined $60 billion six-year infrastructure investment, we would have invested significantly more in six years than the previous two governments invested over 13 years. And in their last year, the Conservative government invested only $2.5 billion compared to our average of $10 billion a year. And here's the result of the previous lack of sustainability and investment. And believe me, these are examples only of a broad deterioration of our infrastructure. The previous government closed 28 hospitals. We have built or are about to complete 18 new hospitals and are expanding over 100 others. All of those hospitals being built by Infrastructure Ontario through alternate finance and procurement, which is a type of public-private partnership. In the electricity sector, which I'll get into in a moment or two, the previous government actually lost 1,800 megawatts of electricity, the equivalent to Niagara money drop. The system was unreliable, with blackouts, brownouts, and backup generators on the streets of Toronto, and they were getting ready to put them in Ottawa as well. And a failing grid system, just unacceptable for the largest city in a G8 country. We have created 8,000 new megawatts of electricity, much of it clean, green electricity, and have upgraded 5,000 kilometers of electricity grid. At the same time, in three more years, we will finish eliminating coal-burning generation, thus removing the equivalent of 7 million cars from our roads. That's roughly the number of cars we have the road, on the road in Ontario today. The opposition has never denied these particular numbers. This year alone, we're spending close to $16 billion on electricity infrastructure, in addition to the regular infrastructure that you see on the graph that I referred to. We haven't seen that level of investment in Ontario infrastructure since the 1960s. But our spending on infrastructure isn't the only thing our predecessors did wrong. When I say our predecessors, I'm talking about all our governments, including previous Liberal, liberal government. I'm not trying to be too partisan, I'm trying to make a point. In the previous government's eight years in power, they never once produced a long-term infrastructure program. A good system of infrastructure takes a long time to build. It requires a lot of planning. You don't get good results if your planning horizon is year to year. But that's exactly what the planning horizon, horizon had been previously. Infrastructure funding decisions were made year to year, budget to budget. There were no long-term infrastructure plans back then. Most of all, our predecessors were nowhere on the public-private partnership map. By contrast, we've gone to market with a total of 47 alternate financing procurement triple P projects valued at over $16 billion dollars in partnership with you and others in the private sector. If there's one message that I want you all to take away today, is that the McGinty government is the party in partnership with the private sector, and also with academic institutions. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. When Dalton McGinty came to power in 2003, he did two things. First, he injected massive amounts of new resources into the infrastructure, which you see on the graph. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a government that believes in the virtues of infrastructure, and I can't stress that point enough. But the num numbers don't tell the whole story. The second thing that Premier McGinty did was he turned to you and others in the private sector. As mentioned, in 2005, our government announced a five-year, $30 million infrastructure program called Renew Ontario. One of the cornerstones of the Renew Plan was partnership. We had a lot we wanted to do, 
the Premier understood that we would need your help, the private sector, to get it done. So he instructed my ministry, the Ministry of Infrastructure, to create Infrastructure Ontario, a dedicated vehicle for partnering with the private sector on infrastructure projects. At the time, we considered a range of possible public-private partnership models, and we had a very lively debate on how far we should or shouldn't go in this regard. In the end, we landed on the current alternative financing and procurement model, AFPs, that most of you know. Our AFP model uses private sector expertise to build or rebuild essential infrastructure on time and on budget. It ensures key government principles, transparency, value for money, public ownership, and public control. It allows some of the risks associated with designing, constructing, and maintaining assets to be transferred to the private sector. This model rewards innovation and efficiency. It is reliable and focused on quality. Projects that have been delivered to our AFP model have created new smart jobs and benefits for all Ontario taxpayers. So far, a total of 52 projects have been approved under the AFP delivery model. Projects on 14 sites have reached construction completion, all of them on budget. Over its lifetime, our AFP model has been used to build and renew hospitals, courthouses, transit, and highways. Let's now measure the impact of Premier McGinty's infrastructure decisions on our partners. I recently told the Canadian Council on Public-Private Partnerships, referred to as C2P2, a number of things. Number one, through the first 10 months of this year, Ontario has gained over 21,000 construction jobs relative to last year. Number two, that the 18th conference of C2P3 P3, had 1,000 attendees. When I was last there in 2007, there were 800 participants. Back in 2005, there were only 400. That's quite a jump. The event has become quite a big deal. There were people, many people, from all over the world there. 